Hello, welcome back to Piers Rocks. Today, a treat especial. We're going to use Rust to access these Commodore disk drives. A few weeks ago, I demonstrated native Linux file system support for these Commodore disk drives. That was implemented in C. I decided to rewrite that support in Rust. Why? Why Rust? I want to get better at writing Rust. I dabbled in it a few years ago, but I'm a C and Python programmer by trade. And this seemed like a really interesting project to allow me to get up to my arms in Rust and learn how to write proper idiomatic Rust and also come to grips with some of the newer features in Rust like the async futures support with Tokyo. I'm going to demonstrate the re-implementation of the file system support in a future video. Not least, I've got some more work to do on that before I want to demonstrate it. But in this video, I thought I'd demonstrate just how easy and simple it can be to use Rust to interact with these disk drives. If you want to use Rust to connect to your Commodore disk drives, then there's a few prerequisites that you're going to need. The first one is you're going to need one of these, an XUM1541 device also known as a Zoom floppy. This allows you to connect your Commodore IEC bus into your Linux PC using USB. You're also going to need uh, the OpenCBM software downloaded, compiled, installed on your PC. I've already got that. I'm going to connect up my 1541 and turn it on. Then we're going to create a new Rust project. We're going to go and edit our cargo.toml and we add the RS1541 crate. We want version 0 0.1. And then we're going to go and want and modify our main. So we're going to need to use the RS1541 CVM object. And then we're going to need to add some code to main. So first of all, we're going to need to create a CBM object. Let's get it the right way around. Let CBM equal CBM colon colon new. And we're not going to bother with errors here, so we're just going to unwrap that. The CBM object in RS1541 returns results for every operation that can fail. We're just going to ignore those possible error results here. The CBM new command actually opens the driver, the USB driver, the OpenCBM USB driver. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to try and identify the device uh, device 8 on the IEC bus. So let info equal CBM dot, I think it's identify, and device 8. And again, we'll unwrap that. And we'll print that out. So drive type and description. And I think it's device type and description. That should not fail. We do not need to unwrap it. Let's get the status of the disk drive. This is the Commodore status. So it'll give us the ID, we'll get the error string. If there's an error string, we'll get a, a track number and the sector number of any error. So let status equal cbm.getStatus, and we want device 8 again. That can fail. Let's print the status. And there's a display function for status. Everything's held in the status object um, as you would want it to be held. That is, we've got the error number stored, we've got the error string stored, we've got the track stored, we've got the sector stored. They can all be accessed individually or simply as a one string, which is what you'd get if you queried the disk drive directly. Now let's do a directory listing of the disk in the disk drive. So we do a cbm.dir, again, device 8. We also need to pass in a second argument to this function. So 
RS-1541 supports single unit disk drives and dual unit disk drives, like this one. If you have a single unit disk drive, then just specify none as the second argument, which is the drive unit number. If you have a dual disk drive, you can pass in sum 0 or sum 1 for that argument. Again, this can fail, so I'll unwrap the result. And then let's print out that directory listing. And the directory listing object has a display function, so we should get a nice printout of that. And that should be it. We don't need to close the driver because when the CBM object is dropped at the end of main, the driver will be closed automatically. That should be enough, those 11 lines of Rust. So let's try building. Wow, that might be the first time I ever wrote a Rust program from scratch and it compiled first time. I will insert the 1541 demo disk into my 1541 drive and we'll try running the program. So we've correctly identified the disk drive as a 1541. We've got a, an OK status from the drive and we've successfully read the disk. Now, this 1541 has a switchable ROM in it, so I can switch it between stock 1541 DOS and Jiffy DOS. I'm just going to switch it over to Jiffy DOS now, that switch, and then I'll run the program again. I don't need to bother resetting the disk drive because when the XUM 1541 driver is opened with our CBM new call, then the IEC bus is automatically reset as part of that. That'll cause the disk drive to reboot and the Jiffy DOS will be loaded. So there we go, we've still got a 1541, but this time we get a Jiffy DOS 1541 as the description, and it can still read the disk absolutely fine. So that was very easy with 11 lines of Rust. I've now connected up my 1570 disk drive, and we'll test that. There we go, correctly identified a 1570, and hopefully it successfully leads, reads the directory, and it has. You can also use Rust to access the older IEEE 488 disk drives, like this 2031, that were designed for use with the Commodore PET. For that, you're going to need an XUM 1541 with the GPIB IEEE 488 interface on it. So I'll plug in my 2031, and then run the same 11 lines of Rust. So we've correctly identified the drive, we get a good status response, and we've correctly read the 2031 demo disk directory. I wanted to show a simple Rust async program using RS-1541 because RS-1541 is thread safe. So in our main function we are creating CBM again and this time wrapping it in an arc so we can pass reference to it to different threads. Within, within it the CBM object is holding a handle to the OpenCBM USB driver. That's wrapped in a mutex. So all access to the OpenCBM functions under the covers and therefore physically accessing the bus and the disk drive is locked behind that mutex. But the application doesn't need to worry about any of that locking, just needs to pass a reference to CBM to different threads like it's done here. There are two threads. First thread is going to first query the drive type at device 8 and then it's going to do a directory listing. The second thread is just going to sit there and repeatedly query the drive status. In fact, it's going to do that three times. And because of the way these threads are actually being spawned and then scheduled by Tokyo, what we'll see is we'll see the drive type is queried first, then the second thread is scheduled and a status query happens, then thread 1 is scheduled again when it does the directory listing, and then thread 2 will do its two other status queries. Pretty straightforward, let's give this a test. There we go. So thread one queried the drive, task, uh, thread two queried the status, 
thread one got a directory listing and then thread two was scheduled again to do drive status. Here's a function implemented in the high level interface that you'd call directly off the CBM object send command. So you'd use this if you wanted to send, I don't know, a new command like n0 colon the name of the disk comma the ID or initialize command to the device. And you can see this is actually making a number of calls under the covers to the open CBM object. So first of all, we're actually getting the, we're locking the CBM object and getting a reference to it. Then we're instructing the disk drive to listen on the bus. We're converting the command that was given us from ASCII to Petsky. It then, it's then being written in a raw format directly to the IEC bus. So the disk drive that's now in listen mode will receive that and act on it. And then we are unlistening and returning. A much more complex high level function that we called in the original 11 line Rust program is the DIR function, where again, it's locking CBM. It is then figuring out what command to send to the disk drive. It's going to send a load command, but whether to send dollar or dollar zero, dollar one, dollar zero and dollar one are used with the dual uh, unit disk drives. And then it's doing that directory listing by opening that particular file. It's throughout this function just checking the status of the disk drive to make sure these commands are working. It's then reading the directory data from the disk drive and then it is reading the information in and then right at the end after closing up access to the disk drive it is parsing the result and returning it back up to the application. There's some other example application implementations in the RS1541 project, like this one, the CLI example, which provides a command line interface to execute some of the underlying capabilities in an interactive way. I hope you enjoyed this quick look at using Rust to access these Commodore disk drives. I was hoping to use Rust to access this DOS 1 2040 disk drive, but since my last video, it stopped working. Like I said then, two steps forward, one step back. If you want to find out more about using Rust to access Commodore disk drives, then I'll put a link down below. You can also go to crates.io and uh, docs.rs and search for 1541 and the project should come up. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Until next time, rock on.